Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, another edition of uh, Garage uh, Scale Studio Modelers. Um, here, I'm Dave Forrest and I'm here with my good friend Harvey Lowe. And today uh, we're going to actually do some airbrush work and I'm going to do some camo on the uh, 251 uh, Stuka Zufus that we talked about a couple of episodes back. Uh, this is the Dragon Kit that I was complaining horribly about. Right. It, yes. yes. Not a right angle on it. And um, since then, I picked up uh, one of the uh, Tamiya kits, one of the 251s, the one with the uh, the 75 millimeter cannon on the front. And this is the result of an evening's work. One evening. One evening. Okay. How many hours? Um, about I would say about four hours. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's a Tamiya kit. It's a Tamiya wow. kit. Now it's an older Tamiya kit. Yeah. This came out in the early 90s, 91, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but, uh, so not as, not as maybe well engineered as obviously the more recent Tamiya kits, but still goes together fairly well. And out of the box, you can build a very nice, compelling mm -hmm. model. And let me tell you, the joy of putting together the suspension compared to what I had to deal with in the Dragon kit. Um, this thing lined up easy. Like this took me once I had all the wheels yeah. sanded and everything. Mm -hmm. It took me like ten minutes to put it together and line. But why to... is that? Is that because there was less parts? The the, the no, it just locating be... pins. Yeah, were just... yeah. So it was just better fit. Uh, better mm -hmm. fit, right? Everything lined up easy, mm -hmm. right? There wasn't this wobbliness on each one. Now I'll have to find some third uh, or uh, aftermarket tracks for it because the ones that come with the kit are rubber. They're terrible. They're right. very. They're underscaled and whatnot. That I mean the. The nice thing about the Dragon Kits is you do get the uh, the Magic Tracks, and they're absolutely gorgeous. They're an effort to put together, but they look really nice. So I have either I can use some Frules, or I've got some AFV ones that I can uh, uh, link and like. Not link and like the individual workable track links that mm -hmm. I can put on here. So, mm -hmm. but just to show mm -hmm. how you know, again, to me, it's four to me, hours. I, yeah, which is how long was it you fiddling? I remember you're fiddling with a oh, chassis right. for how long? It must have been. A, a, there was more than one night. There was oh yeah this this yeah. was weeks yeah just, just so you you, you uh, ah, viewers me. know uh, so we're doing this live so when he sneezes that's the live the sneeze show, the live sneeze um, we actually do what we did when we were well when I was younger we actually go to Dave's place for for nightly not every night but built yeah, once or once or twice, twice, a, once week. Or twice yeah. a week and yeah. I know you were uh, fiddling with that for at least a couple of nights and this one was four hours so. yeah yeah and there's yeah. you know if I look at if I look at this head on, like there's, it's crooked. Is really? Oh yeah. I, I didn't yeah. think it was that bad. Yeah, it's bad. Like look at the, like it, there's an obvious difference mm. in in the height of the fenders. Uh, I see. Right? So, uh, but that could be uh, I mean, that could be me. Uh, that could be user error, but um, I don't know. But you would make mistakes like that. Yeah, I don't know. Just but yeah. that that goes harkens back to our last episodes on judging that. Be interested to know from you viewers if you if you enter a contest and you you attempt something like this, you're at a bit of a disadvantage at a show for fit and finish if you simply go in with an easier build. Yeah, yeah. Like this is the risk profile. It's right? a risk profile. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. So, but would you say that even this kit's still more detailed than this one? Oh, yeah. Like overall, yeah, it is. But but the but the amount of effort you have to put into it yeah. for that detail, uh -huh. I, you know, I'm not quite sure. Mm. I'm not quite sure it's By worth it. By the time it. you weather it. And, yeah, exactly. By the time you paint it and weather it, you know, and we'll we'll do a we'll do a side by side yeah. comparison when these are done, and you know, then everybody can judge for themselves what they uh, what they feel. Mm. Uh, but certainly, like if, if and this is a different version of the two fifty one, but I know the the to me, I have the Tamiya equivalent of this one here. The oh, you don't, oh, 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 and okay. and it's not like the the crates aren't as deep. Like the uh, crates on the on the dragon one look really good. Right? So so I understand that uh, AFV Club does one now. The yes, yeah. Uh, and from what I know, is each has its advantages and disadvantages compared to these. I heard that the AV Club has really nice rocket detail, uh, but the Dragon Kit has better, you know, crate detail. I haven't looked at the two kits, but th that's what I've heard. So, I guess if you really wanted, you could actually buy them all and kind of interchange. Yeah, them yeah, mix and match. Mix and yeah. match. Yeah. Like I, I even like I tried to use. I almost used the seat, one of the spare seats, mm. but I found that the actually the Tamiya seat was pretty. Uh, the leather on it was looked better, more shaped. It's inside you can. Now this one's got leather. That one's wood bench. Are they yes. both? And they're both the same. Are they C or B variants? These are D. These, These are, are both D's. D variants. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they would have they would have reconfigured the interior depending yeah. on yeah. you know. Like this, this is really just a standard two two fifty uh, two fifty one D that right. has the 
I see. The, the mortar's on the side, right? Whereas yeah, this, cool. this has a different configuration because of the mount that you need for the gun. Yeah. Neat looking. <clears throat> yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well, while we're at it, um, I was reading a few of the comments on judging, because um, we always do read what's posted. We may not always get packed to individuals. And I must say, Dave, I don't know if you've looked at them. Robert, I don't know if you've looked at them. But all of the comments were really positive. And uh, there wasn't, wasn't really any controversial comments. Sometimes those are good. But one viewer did mention that um, they, they did not like the fact that some judges come with uh, lights, flashlights, and rulers uh, to show us. I, I've never seen a, a person, a judge, come with a ruler. Have you? Have you seen I've seen I've seen I've seen somebody with a protractor. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, that, I I can get the gentleman's comment about that. Yeah. But but on lights though, I, I find that some shows. Oh, well, you need lights, yeah. Yeah, because the shows are like the the lighting's not good enough in the room, and as we all get older, uh, we need lights. But otherwise, I thought it was an interesting comment about the. the yeah, and you know what might be interesting for for um, folks to do is. Maybe go and take some of your older builds, yeah. pull them out, and have a good look at them, and like with a flashlight, yeah. right? Take a good That's look, true. like a, like scrutinize them, yep. and I think find where, you know, if you had the opportunity to go back and fix something exactly. or do something different, that might be a good opportunity mm -hmm. for you to maybe, mm -hmm. you know, apply those lessons learned as it were to. You know what I do? When I do, like to say what you're doing here, I actually will take it into the sunlight sometimes. Yeah. And it gives you a different yeah. view on how your paint is. Yeah, exactly. Looks. You might look at it. So it looks it's good inside. Yeah. You see in the sunlight, yeah. it's a little bit good. But, uh, yeah. but that looks great. Yeah, that's yeah. really come along. Have you started weathering it, or is that just modulation? No, that's the no really? Just the pure modulation really? at this point. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. So let's, yeah, yeah. so we can, um, we can get into it. We'll, uh. Uh, we'll get a close-up view. We'll let Robert uh, get in close so we can see. We're going to do some airbrush work. I'll mm -hmm. talk about the paints I'm using. I'll talk about the fitting ratios, uh, and just kind of walk through the process. Mm -hmm. And you know, Harvey and I will just have a mm -hmm. you know we'll kind of go back and forth while we're doing that. Okay, sounds good. So while you're doing the the mixing, I'll be doing a, maybe a bit of commentary here and there. But uh, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay, all right. So we're um, we're going to do some camel work on this uh, two fitting. So I've already started. As you can see, and the colors I'm using are, uh, I'm using two colors from the AK range. So one is the uh, RC047, which is uh, olive, uh, olive green, which is REL6003. Uh, and then the for the brown or the red brown, I'm using uh, RC067, uh, which is uh, rock brown, uh, REL812. Uh, now, because of the nature of the camouflage, meaning that it's a fairly dispersed pattern. Uh, I'm not going to modulate it, so I'm just going to spray it on uh, and I'll show you kind of the mixing ratios that I'm using. We're going to be thinning with uh, good old faithful uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner. Um, again, these are kind of acrylic lacquer, so they respond well to the uh, to the lacquer uh, uh, leveling thinner here. And you can use the Tamiya one, or I guess you could use, I've never used AK's thinner, so I don't know how well it works. Uh, yeah, I have. Have you? And it's it's very good. Is it? It's very very good. Yeah, I've used both leveling thinner and their own AK line. Do not use the AK paints though with uh, Tamiya, their their regular thinner, their acrylic thinner. It, it didn't work for me. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I just I just I keep I stick with this stuff because it's just it stinks. <laughs> yeah. It's but it but it works yeah. right. It's like proven and and I really like the uh, the Tamiya orange top. Yes. Leveling thinner, lacquer leveling thinner as with well. With retarder. With the retarder, yes, yeah, that's yes. that works really well. Um, and, and for the audience, if you're using leveling thinner, it is not a, a pure lacquer; that's a synthetic lacquer. So uh, you're safe to use it with AK paint. So um, don't use regular lacquer thinner that you'd get at the hardware store with these paints because it won't work. That's right. Yeah, it's worth spending a little bit of money on the. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've already I've already put a, a, a few drops of the leveling thinner in my airbrush. I'm using a, an Iwata HP. What is this? An HPB? HPBH, which has, I think it has a 0.15 needle. Wow. I think. Mm. Maybe I love a lot of brushes. It's yeah, they are reliable. That's and all it's got, I use. And it's got the built-in Mac valve as well. Yeah. Which is nice. So I'm just, I'm just mixing paint and I'm doing it, I'm just mixing it very thin. Mm. Oh, and uh, for our viewers, the Mac valve is just simply a, a fancy term that you can use to adjust the air pressure. On the it's a micro yeah. air control, I yeah. think is what they call it. Rather than doing it on your compressor. Yeah. 
So always have a trusty paper cloth in your mind. You, you mix your paints uh, right in the uh, airbrush paint cup like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. When I'm doing when I'm when I don't have a lot to mix. Oh, okay. If I mix like if I'm doing primer or a base coat, I'll mix it in a little plastic cup. But right. But you're going to be using right. so little of this. Right. And then I have a, a piece of paper that I use. And what I do, and I'm spraying very low. I'm spraying at about ten or twelve psi. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I'll just test it to see. You got a nice quiet compressor there. What kind of compressor are you using? That's the, uh, that's, what is that? That's the big Iwata one that has the two feeds off of it. Right. The big square black the box. The big square black box, yeah. That's as opposed to a diaphragm. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll, I'll continually go back to this. Yeah. You know, you'll see me as I'm airbrushing. And then what I do is um, I look at the instructions. So Dragon, you know, they give actually decent camel patterns. Um, Hmm. Which is like the only redeeming quality of their instructions, to be fair. But um, so you can kind of see they don't, they don't give a top-down view. They don't show the other side of the vehicle. But at least you can kind of figure out an approximate. And again, it's an approximation. I wouldn't right. get too I wouldn't get too hyped up on uh, applying these. Again, these were generally field applied, so yeah. there'd be a ton of variability. Right, to them, right, right, right. So right. Um, so unless you're doing a specific vehicle that's in a photo, mm -hmm. you know, you can you can kind of take a little do a few, what you want a few liberties with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So um, so as you can see I started so I'm just gonna continue working. Uh, I might I'm very random when I do this. Like I just kind of I'll go to one part of the vehicle, I'll spray there, mm -hmm. and then you know I'll move to another part of the vehicle um, and then maybe come back. So it's a very mm -hmm. you know it's a very organic uh, type of process that it's I nice tight line there. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. So let's see, we'll go, um, let's start doing, let's start doing some on the side. Actually, I'm just, sorry, I'm just going to pull the wheels off. While you're pulling the wheels off, um, what is your mixture? 50-50 thinner to paint? No, it's more like uh, it's 60, at least 60% thinner, 40% right. right. paint. Yeah, you want that tight airbrush yeah, exactly. uh, uh, lines without any uh, overspray. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep, especially when you're doing this type of camel pen, you got to keep it yes, very thin. Yeah. It reduces the overspray. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that you don't modulate it. I think you're referring to uh, you're not modulating the red and green. You only modulated the base color. Uh, Correct. Dark yellow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll 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 adjust things mm -hmm. either through filters yeah. or through the weathering process. Okay. So now that I've got the wheels off, I'll get this out of the way. Um, Let's do a little bit. So, yeah, so we'll just we'll just carry on mm -hmm. here. That's so. looking good from this light. It's looking great. So again, so you just start spraying. So I'm just kind of working it. Now, for the viewers that, that can't quite see, that's a very very thin application, almost misting yes. on the paper and the model. Don't don't apply it too thick. You got it. Yeah. yeah. So you'll see again. You'll see me go off of the yeah. model and go yeah. back on just to get the sometimes the paint. And that prevents the paint from sticking to the needle too, right? It's yeah, exactly. That's what, exactly what happens. That's looking great. Look at that. It's coming along. It's and I and, and there. It's getting in the way. Oh yeah, sorry. Move that gun shield off to the side here. Yeah, and that's see, it's as simple as that. So so far, when you're applied what you've applied up to this point, how long did it take you to do what you did there? Well, not long at all. Like this was uh, maybe forty-five minutes. Oh wow, well, that's yeah. great. Just, Once I, you get that right paint mixture, yeah, 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 it's easy. So yeah, I, I just yeah. and I, I just did it to just to kind of prep for yeah. what we were going to do here today. Like I, I could have easily have finished the model in an evening, mm. right? Just. Now, for me, I do, I do know that when I spray, I spray in the basement, and in Toronto, it can get very humid in the summer, so I have the humidifier going on when I do that, because I find with these tight schemes, if you've got a humid climate, you might get water yeah. here, but, so I also have a moisture trap on my airbrush. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I have a I have the whole setup going. Yep. Um, but I don't, yeah, we're lucky, because we have... Yeah, we're, well, right well, now, we're in the dead of winter, yeah. so... Well, I work for a, I work for a furnace and heating company so right i should, I should have i should have quality <laughs> gear in my house as a result um yeah so i just i'm just picking random spots on the so i'm going to start getting in now just a, a note um so I, here's a crate 
and the crates. So the crates I've decided, and I've seen this uh, on, on photos as well, the crates I'm just going to leave in the standard yellow. Mm -hmm. And I took one of the crates, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in wood, right. and I have the metal parts all done in primer. Mm. So this will be just something that will sit on That's one of the... Cool. That right, just as a different just contrast. As, yeah, just yeah. like a different, like a visual... Yeah. You know, something to pull the eye to it, something a little bit different. I'll leave these in the yellow, mm. but I will camo. You did, you did, you did see camo on the actual right. brackets. Right, on, on the brackets. Yeah. Now, for the viewers who don't know about this vehicle, uh, these crates were delivered with with the the weapons, the armaments in them, right? That's why you're, you, you have them in these different colors. They were not camouflaged at the factory. Correct. Yeah, this was all crates on, right? This was all field applied. Yeah, they were, the crates they were, came field applied. So I think they might have been single use. Yes, yeah, right? yes. So yes, they, they would just were. kind of build them in place and then yep. ship them, attach yep. them on, right? Some were metal, I believe, and some uh, brackets. Yeah. Uh, and some were, some, wood. Were, some were wood. So you paint those separately anyway. So. so I think the later in the war when they were kind of dealing yeah. with material shortages. So again, this is where research does help you, um, because if you didn't know that and you're spraying the model with the brackets on it, um, will it affect the judging? That's that's a controversy. But you want to make sure that you get the model historically accurate. And because they were applied uh, separately when they fired and they got rid of them, then yeah, you paint. But my guess is most judges won't know that. That's true. Right. Although, did I send you that picture uh, about that? Hellcat model where it was beautifully done, but the canopy was on backwards. So well, was that what it was? I was, I was thinking it, was. it might have been that. That was the canopy was on backwards. Mm. It's too bad. Uh, it's beautifully done, but so I wouldn't have known that necessarily. Not that I'm a Hellcat expert. What was that looking, Robert? Is that good? Good, very yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, we just, we got the overhead cam the yeah. first time we're working with it, so. And just to give yeah. everybody a better view. And I know that Dave and I are always in front of the camera, but our thanks to Robert, he deserves a lot of credit. Because he's the guy doing all the background photography. Wow! And Robert you can hear him, the, it's not us doing this, right? So there's three of us here. And by the way, while Dave is spraying, yes, he's spraying synthetic lacquer. No, we're not wearing masks. You should wear a mask, but we're in his garage. So yeah. we've got a lot of ventilation. That's a great point. Right? That's why we call ourselves Garage Studio Modelers. If I was downstairs yeah, in my workshop, I would be, yeah. I'd be, well, I don't know. Well, this stuff is pretty, it's not bad. It's not bad. Like For that little, 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 little yeah. bit. I mean, you're probably better off. At least the, I have the, I have the spray booth downstairs. Did you use a, uh, while we're on it, did you use AK for the, for the Dunkel Gelt? Mm -hmm. No, that was the, uh, what I use? I use the, um, the modulation set from uh -huh. Gunzi. Is that, and that's a lacquer, isn't that's it? That's a lacquer, yeah. yeah, yeah. That yes, would be smelly. That would be, yeah. So that, that I definitely sprayed out of the, uh, Our apologies, Mr. Uh, uh, the Mr. Compressor makes noise from down there, which is annoying. But hey, yeah. it is part of the hobby, so hey, that's looking great. Yeah, so I'm just kind of making, yeah. you know, I'm gonna go down. I, I'm gonna leave the yeah. wheels uh, in just yellow, and, oh, okay. and the hubs of the front wheels in yellow. So well, that's, that's a good point. If you know all the detail of doing all that wheel and you put mud on it, you're gonna hide it a lot of it if you do decide to do that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's true too. I find that when I'm spraying tight patterns like that, like you're doing now, sometimes I have to, if you, if you have an airbrush where you can adjust, pull the needle back to clear the the, the nozzle, that sometimes needs to be done too, right? Yeah, exactly. So you've already done what, what? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six or seven bands already? Yeah, just I, again, just building it up, kind yeah. of just following. Yeah. You know this a little like and yeah i probably moved away from this but yeah kind of yeah a generous kind of and then maybe you'll do this one down so there's a little bit of so there's a little bit of green down here so i'm just going to work on that yeah it's a nice green too yeah the the, the AK colors are actually yeah. for their, i'm not a big fan of the yellow but other the red and green is i do like the ak range my go-to's for these are AK and Tamiya. I, I like them both. Yeah, to me, it's it's Tamiya. I love the lacquer paints. The oh, do you? Yeah. Those are really smelly. Those though. stink. Yeah, those but are those really go spray beautifully. Um, maybe do something up here. And you're starting to see the. Yeah, see, there's the needles drying a bit. Needles drying a bit. Yeah. 
big fan of the room. I'm just kind of just working it, you know? Kind of a cloudy. So you got like a fairly low pressure, yep. a high thinner to paint ratio, yep. and looks like your airbrush nozzle is pretty close to the surface of the model. You know, people ask me about what what the magic airbrush is and how you get so tight lines. Well, I think there's a couple of factors, right? One is you've got a really uh, uh, tight uh, airbrush to surface. It's very close to the surface. Yes. Right? That reduces the overspray. Right. That reduces overspray. You've got a really thin mixture of paint, 60-40 thinner to paint you mentioned. Yeah, if not, maybe 65-35, yeah. right? And you've got an air pressure that's fairly low. And you're spraying in a real, not a humid environment. I, I find too that it, it's while well, a lot of brushes are great, you, you can get good effects with with virtually any airbrush as long as you've got you know these factors in yeah. control. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't have to be. I That's mean, what you're comfortable with. It's right? what. Yeah, I heard that some of the. Some of the guys in our local club have been building for years. They were, still, they were still using single action airbrushes, which I didn't know. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's 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 less the tool, it's more the model. Yeah, and you can like I when I bought this there, I mean this, and this is really a step below a custom micron. Hmm. Um, but when I was buying this, I could have I could have spent the extra few hundred bucks to get the custom micron, but uh, you know, until you, until you, I'm a yeah. firm believer, like master the tool. Sure. Before you, just because you pay a lot for something doesn't mean you're going to get, you know, it takes a lot of work, as you know, right? I mean, look at the work you did with your Italian camel. Well, that, that is a good point. I mean, the, yes, I have a custom micron, but I, I tend to use uh, an HP beast, uh, like you have here, for this type of camouflage because I find the micron is so tight that it almost looks artificial. Show when you're doing camo like this, too. It's too tight, yeah. Yeah, it's too tight. You want a you want a bit of that gradation between the pattern and the base color. So let's just pause for a minute here. That's so I've kind of good. worked around the front and around the side here. Um, you know, I think I'll probably keep. I've already done the back. Mm. Um, so maybe let's flip it over and do the other side. Now there's nothing to stop you from. Like, there's nothing to say you can't go back to the green. Yeah, right. Right as you're. As you're spraying, if you if you see that um, you know you missed a few spots or you want to go over something, you can always go back over it. Not a problem. So here, so here I've got no reference because it doesn't right, show the right, side of the vehicle. Right. So you just guess. so I'm just guessing, right? So I'll just. Um, I, I see what you're doing though. Is you're 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 applying the colors in a fairly balanced way, right? You're not you're not doing all, so many green patterns in one area. I mean, that's your artistic side coming through, right? Yeah, just, yeah, you're just trying to, yeah. You, just and, kind of over, you just get, and over time, like, there's no, no. there's no formula for this. Yeah. It's really just getting an eye for it. But, yeah. you know, I hate to say, in, in page 46 of Hano Meg and Action, that pattern that you're doing right there didn't have that little swirly, curly area in the left corner of that airbrush pattern that you're doing right now. So you really must check your uh -oh. references, David. Yeah. Really, it's inaccurate, but hey, I it's dropped, just a, I dropped the ball. You drop the ball on that one, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking great. And you've managed to get all those patterns done by just putting a few drops in your airbrush. Yeah, that's hardly any paint. Yeah, it's hardly any paint. Like, any, like I won't even. I, like, here's what's. I don't even. I don't, yeah, I won't use all of this. There's hardly any in there. Yeah. That's looking great. And again, you know, you like the, like these were field applied, so mm -hmm. you know, be random. By the way, you, you, the the compressor you have is very nice, and I don't know about you guys, but I, I like these types of quiet compressors because I had an old diaphragm one. That the noise is rather annoying after a while. It kind of really helps you concentrate. Yeah, on you do as much spraying yeah. you know, as we do. It's nice yeah. to make the investment in something that's quiet. And as I said before, we're in a garage right now, and you can't smell the leveling thinner at all. No. Still for safety, put a mask on. Yeah. But, you, but it's well ventilated here. Yeah, exactly. So we'll just kind of keep working. 
you've already done, I'm, I'm counting, one, two, three, four, or five within the last five minutes. No, it's very easy. You, you, gotta, you gotta enter this in a speed build competition. Today. But actually, you, you already putzing around with a, with a wheel line for like two nights. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, making up for the time on the build. Yeah, yeah. Because the build was horrible. Yeah. That looks great. Like that building that that other Tamiya kit that I had out earlier. That was like that was like pure therapy. That's what that was. Do you, do you ever whip a model out of wall? <laughs> Not in a very very long time. I, I, I admit I have not. I did it when I was a kid. But, uh, because Out of frustration? Yes, yeah, yeah. but because we're mature adults now, we're very mature, um, I don't do that anymore. So you can see there's a bit of pooling. Yeah. Right, so just because I got, I got a little careless with it, so I'm just going to let it dry and just go over it. Yeah, go over it. Yeah, let it, yeah if you do that, uh, folks, just let it dry yeah. a bit and just go back over it. Go back over it. Let's see, it's virtually gone. I, I remember hearing references that a, uh, a lot, some of the crew thin the stuff with fuel too. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes they they wouldn't have. You know. yeah. So again, fill the plaid stuff like the, yeah. the quality, like it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Yeah. Sometimes you can even see the overspray in in some. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can actually see it. You know, one interesting thing about camouflage, just a general comment, is this type of camouflage was very indicative of German armor, right? You, you can, and uh, the Italians are very, very gaudy in theirs, but you don't, you don't see Germans in Allied tanks in this type of scheme. No. Yeah. No, not even. Well, maybe uh, you, you do have the Sherman tanks in some of the Pacific. That's true. Would have the That's different, true. you know? Not, not, colors, but not like this. Yeah, not, that wasn't their go-to. Because as I watch some of the newsreel footage uh, of current conflicts around the world, a lot of the tanks of opposing sides, they kind of look the same. <laughs> They're the same Well, the Ukraine, you can't tell. You can't tell, right? right? You can't tell. They have to put the markings on the tanks. That's why they have the, the Zs. Yes, the, right, right. Right. But in World War II, it's like, okay, these were German vehicles. These are which, which raises a good point. Like, we'll probably, do, I'll probably do a Ukrainian war build. Mm. I've already got... You know, I've got a few pieces, as you know, Harvey, mm -hmm. a few pieces I'm working on, but I'll probably do one from start to finish here. Mm -hmm. Just because it's topical. Maybe a bit controversial. Well, we, gentlemen, we're modelers here, so uh, there's some guys that have done Russian, there are guys that have done Ukrainian, we're, we're, we're modelers and we're, we're modeling off vehicles and complex, so that's what we do. Oh, exactly. But it's amazing how political. Hmm. Like I remember, like I bought a Zvezda kit. Yeah. Shortly after the war had started, and I kind of felt guilty. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, this there there is a lot of right? nice uh, aftermarket coming coming out of Russia. As a modeler, just saying, right? Yeah. Just like Quinta Studios, like those, yes. those resin. Yes. Just saying. Instrument panel. They're gorgeous. I'm talking purely models. Yeah. Politics. Yeah. I mean, it is a tragic situation over there, for sure. It's coming along. Look, you've already almost done the whole vehicle in the green. And yeah. Let's see. I'm looking at my watch here. We've been at it for about, what, 15 minutes? 20? Now, while you're doing that, um, we talked about AV Club. Having a 35th uh, uh, Stuka Foos. By the way, what does Stuka Foos mean? Uh, Stuka on foot. Stu Stuka on foot. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, FV Club's got one. You you have the Dragon ones. Uh, Tamiya has does one. one yeah. uh, 72nd, you've got the old Venerable Eski kit from way back when. Uh, there's the Ravel offering in Italaria. I honestly I don't know if those are the same molds in some They might be, yeah. They might be. 
And of course, Vesta does does one in 100 scale. Vesta does one in uh, 35th too, uh, I believe. Uh, but theirs is retrofitting the Stukafoos brackets onto their old 2000. I think it's their C, yeah, their C version. Their C version, which mm. I hear has got some accuracy issues. Oh, does it? Yeah, apparently the uh, suspension detail is, is a bit incorrect, and the interior um, is is a bit off. But those are those are kind of your choices. There's quite a few of these these choices in in manufacturers with this particular variant. Yes, there is. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the inside of the brackets. Right. I'm not going to leave those why, yellow. Yeah, because why would they? Right. In, in real life, why would? And they? obviously, anything that's covered, like you're not going to see anything that's covered up, so you don't worry about that. Right. Right. Um, that's looking great. Yeah, it's almost we're almost there on the green. Yeah. So you can see we're we're doing this pretty quick, right in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't uh, doesn't uh, doesn't take much. And we're not we're not doing recuts. So if you screw up, Dave, it's, it's live. It's and live. It's captured. Yeah. It's on the it's, internet it's, forever. It's looking great. And then thanks everyone for chiming in and having a look at all of our videos. We do do them completely for fun. Yeah. So this is, this is definitely not work for us. And we and we banter too much. We talk too much. Talking's good though. Talking is good. Let's it looks see. German to me. Let's do another. Let's just carry. Maybe I'll just I'll go back to this one here. Yeah. Let's kind of carry this. Are there any surviving Stukafoos around the world? Do you know? I don't know. No, I don't think so. There's there's a lot of the uh, uh, 251Ds and yes, Cs, but not a. Uh, no, I don't think anybody's yeah. actually gone through the trouble of. Now I hear that they were not terribly accurate. These <laughs> weapons. Oh, okay. Right. They just like boom. Yeah. If the alignment on my brackets are in oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. The wheels are wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, my understanding is the crews launched them like they weren't in the vehicles when they launched. No. They, 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 they would kind of outside. park the vehicle, they would yeah. point it in a certain direction, yeah. and then they would disembark, fire it remotely, and then get back in. And get back in, right. And that's, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a great trigger. I just made me think of something. So I, I haven't put a lot of crew stowage in here. Oh. And the reason for that is that I think with the rocket blasts coming off, sure. that stuff would just get That's true. totaled. That's true, yeah. So I haven't left like a lot of tarps yeah, or yeah, crew yeah. stowage. I've kind of kept it point. clean. And pictures probably show that too. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the yeah, they weren't... They weren't uh, no. Yeah, they stepped outside. And then yeah. they, they went in packs, right? So yeah. their effectiveness is when you had several of these together... Yeah. Firing rather than well, we're going to put one out there. And exactly, you got it. I believe they had different caliber weapons. The the rockets were yeah they had like a twenty eight centimeter and thirty two uh, forty I think yeah oh yeah they had a forty two yeah I think this is the yeah this is the forty or forty two so I did the larger one they give you brackets for both uh, the motors for both so I did the larger one somewhere in Senior and somewhere you know high like explosive yeah. yeah. I don't think there was an Allied equivalent of this, was no. there? No. Um, I don't know. Maybe the Sherman no, right. screaming mimi. Yes. Mimis? Yes. Mimis? Yeah, Mimis? the Sherman screaming mimi. Yeah, which I did as a kid with a monogram kit. Yeah. Oh, I had the uh, little Esky one. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh. In seventy seconds. Seventy. Oh, yeah, seventy seconds. Well, actually, it's good because we're just we're almost out of paint, so. And you you managed it with just that. Yeah, I'm just gonna maybe just a little thing in here. So you can see I'm just kind of trying to get in behind the bracket. Mm. You but again, you're kind of like pretending you're. This is what I do. I pretend that I'm a field crew, right? Yeah. Applying it. So you're not going to do under the vehicle. You're not going to do inside the brackets. Why would you? You got it. There you go. So I think we're. I'll just tidy that up a bit here. Then you can still see the modulation through uh, through the base color, but even with the camo on it, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Just, again, when you're spraying like these lights, this makes sense. To... Now, I, I like what the color you chose, because I find with, with the scale models, um, you want that contrast and I like the, the olive green look of this, rather than a very, very dark, dark green. Yeah, yeah, I think... Uh, Scale effect and all that. Yeah. 
So the so the AK collar is actually quite nice. Yeah. So God, I think I think we've moved in the hob. You remember the days where everyone was about FS colors, right? I think those days are kind of gone because of why the range. Oh, what looks good? What looks good? What looks good if it's in the range? I mean, it's got. A, I mean, there is there is a lot to be said for. Um, you know, some level of accuracy. Yes, of course. Yeah. But. Uh, but not get too caught up. In but not, yeah. Well, I that green is the wrong green that was used in 1944. Yeah, you'll get that for sure. So I think we'll uh, I think we'll end it there for today. I, I think everybody understands. Yep. Kind of, you just kind of work. I'll just kind of work through yep. the rest of this. You don't want to hear our banter, anyways. When yeah. Spray them yeah. I think we'll come back to it when it's finished. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll do another episode on having it done, and we'll, I think the next step will be filters and, and weathering, and weathering yes. which is the fun part. Which is absolutely mm -hmm. the fun part. Um, yeah, so thanks uh, thanks again for, for yes. hanging out with uh, with Harvey and I. Um, and don't forget if uh, if anybody has any questions, they can either put them in the comments mm -hmm. or they can hit us at uh, GarageStudioModelers at gmail .com. Uh, we do monitor. Harvey does a better job of monitoring the emails than I do, but uh, and, and the comments. But if uh, you need to get a hold of either of us or Robert, uh, feel free to do so. We uh, we, you know, we love yes. to hear from you guys. And if you have any we, questions yes. or you want to see something mm -hmm. or have a uh, you know want a clarification on something we talked about in one of the episodes, we're uh, we're we more do. than happy to. And we do it. read them. I, I we do read them. I read everything. I know Dave, you're busier than I am, but I read. I everything. do try and get through them. Yes, yes. and yes. we don't we don't always respond, but we read them. Yes, we, we do. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Until the next time. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.